Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Ahabat fillah as we've mentioned as we mentioned prior to this that in order to have our deeds accepted in Islam two conditions have to be met. First is ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is that mutaba, is that you're following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the type of da'wah that you're doing or in the type of ibadah all the various types of worship that we could be doing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going with the first condition of habatifillah ikhlas lillah sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem wa ma umiru illa liya'budu Allah mukhlisin Allah ad-din hunafa wa yuqimu salat wa yutu zakat wa dhalika din al-qayyim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَمَا أُمِّرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ That they were not commanded, talking about the Bani Israel, the nations before us, they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone, مُخْلِسِينَ You know, pure, purifying their worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Mukhlisin lahuddin. And this is where the Christians go astray. Look how many of the Christians. I just had a Christian who tried to argue on the YouTube recently, uh, bringing all these biblical references about why you should worship Jesus and leave off the worship of Allah alone, the creator of Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam. And why Jesus is the son of God. Wa'iyadhan billah min hadha dhalal. All of these false arguments, they tried to use biblical reference to affirm shirk to affirm polytheism when the worship goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone as those before the nations before the nation of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and all the other anbiya wa ma umiru illa liya'budu Allahu mukhlisin they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone with sincerity hunafa meaning the, the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam pure monotheism wa yuqimu salat and establish the prayer that means the nations before us they had a type of prayer it probably didn't resemble exactly as we pray, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed, but there was prostration involved. So this lets us know that keeping the prayer is a part of actualizing that tawheed, that sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And there are so many ahadith and so many ayat in the Quran that illustrate for us the importance of ikhlas, sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One hadith, which I want to mention as briefly as I can, as it has started to snow, the first, uh, this hadith, it's a hadith of uh, Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, in which he said, in al awwal nas, uh, uh, that, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in al awwal nas yukda alayhi yawm al qiyamah rajanun stushida, fa utiya bihi fa arrafu un niyamu fa arrafa, fa qal, fa ma'amalta fiha. قال قاتلت فيك حتى استشهد قال كذبت ولكنك فعلت لي يقال هو جري فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب لوجهه حتى علك في النار. In this hadith عظيم about illustrating first the importance of a class doing our deeds for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The hadith of Abi Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عن where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that one of the first people on the day of judgment who will be judged is a man who was martyred and we all know the position of martyrdom in Islam that it's Azim if it's you know if it's done for the sake of Allah sincere martyrdom and it's done in accordance with Islam not evil not what we see ISIS and all these other groups these Takfiri groups the Taliban and Al Shabab and these others who kill innocent civilians, who blow themselves up in malls, who attack malls, who attack things because they show their weakness instead of their strength based on Kitab wa Sunnah. No, we're not talking about extremism and, 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 and jihad uh, shaitan. We're talking about sincere Islamic jihad as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam fought. Alayhi salatu wa salam. So, the first one who will be brought on the Day of Judgment is a man who was martyred and he and it will be said to him so what did you do he will say I fought for your sake 
had until I was martyred. And the law will say to him, you have lied. Verily you did it so that the people would say you were brave. And they did. Meaning they said it. And it was said about you. So then he was dragged on his face into the fire. That shows us that the one who is not sincere in their ibadah, what a, a, a wicked uh, ending. May Allah protect us from that. Because ikhlas, it requires constantly fighting your nafs. Constantly, the shaitan, you're going to start an act of worship, and then the shaitan's going to come and try to uh, destroy it. Maybe not destroying it totally, but just taking the edger away from it by getting you to beautify it for the people. May Allah protect us and accept our good and forgive our evil. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The second one who was mentioned in this hadith, so as not to prolong it, was a man who uh, studied knowledge and he taught the knowledge. And a, uh, a man who had memorized the Quran and he taught it. And the, we know the other, many other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, خير الناس, uh, خير, من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. The best of you is those who learn the Quran and teach it. So we know that this is a great, great deed in Islam. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, خير الكم, The best of you. So the best of you is the one who learns the Quran and then teaches it to the people. Allahu Akbar. So this person will be brought, this alam, will be brought for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yom Al-Qiyamah and asked, what did you do? And he said, uh, I, I learned knowledge and I taught it. And I read the Quran for your sake. And then Allah will say, You lied. But verily you did it. Uh, verily you did it so that the people would say that you're an alam or you did it so that the people would say you're a qari you're a great reciter and it was said so it was said about this person and then they were dragged into the hellfire and the third one is the one who spent in the sake of Allah and he says ma ma anfaktu shayin illa anfaktu fiha luck. The third one is the man Allah gave him an abundance of wealth. And he was brought for, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and then he will be asked, what did you do? And the man will say, I, I didn't leave off a path of spending except that I spent it for your sake. Meaning that he did, maybe he built masajid, he built this, he did this, he gave to the poor, he gave to the miskeen, he gave to this one, he helped this one. Wealth, 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 and didn't use it for good. He used it for good. But it's sincerity. Allah will say, Kithabd, you lied. But rather you did it so that the people would say you were a spendthrift, or you were generous. And it was said about you. And then he will be dragged on his face into the hellfire. Wa'iyadun billah. Ahabatifillah. The whole point of mentioning these, uh, this hadith and these verses from the Quran was to illustrate the importance of being sincere in your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of your acts of ibadah. And may Allah bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.